Now for some slightly more complicated designs, which can be very efficient because they allow us to ask more questions within a single study. First, the one-way independent groups design. We have a single independent variable, and we have more than two levels of that variable. So it's a sort of extension of the independent groups design we saw in Chapter 7, the pen, laptop type of study. And here, the simplest of these extended designs, three independent groups, so three levels of the IV, and participants were randomly assigned to one of the three groups. And in this Bushman study of memory for ads inserted in various types of TV program, one group of participants saw neutral types of programs, another saw programs with violent content, and the third group programs with sexual content. After watching these programs in a sort of social setting with snacks and soda available, every participant was given a surprise memory test. Oh, by the way, would you mind just telling us what you remember about the ads? A recognition test. People had to choose one of four options for each of 12 products for which they saw ads. So the score was simply number of correct recognitions. Random chance would have been three out of 12. How would we analyze this study? Well, this is the first example of planned contrasts, or more specifically, the simpler form, planned comparisons. And this is our general strategy for analyzing all the designs in this chapter and the next. And it has the great advantage that it's pretty simple and direct. It can be appropriate for nearly all research questions, and it uses uh, estimation and effect sizes. So we can plot out the results and interpret them using the sorts of logic and diagrams and approach that we've used throughout the book so far. So before we see the data, what questions do you think Bushman might have wanted to ask? Well, first is let's compare the neutral condition with the violent. So we want neutral mean minus violent mean, that's a comparison. A comparison is defined as the difference between two group means. So there's our first comparison. And the second research question concerned neutral and sexual content. So our second comparison was neutral mean minus sexual mean. And that will be the effect size for that second comparison we're interested in. Now let's look at the data. I'm on the independent groups comparison page, and here are the Bushman data. There are two options on this page. You either choose to put in the summary statistics up here or the full data down below. Now here we have the summary statistics, and you might see these when you open this page, or you can type them in from the book. If you do type in any data like this that you wish to save, well, go up and save this whole file with a new name, and then you can open it again and work further with it later. So I've just opened this up and I see the N, mean, and standard deviation for each of the neutral, violent, and sexual content groups. And here are those means with 95% confidence intervals, of course. We want to make two planned comparisons. First, neutral versus violent. And so what I do here, and uh, if in doubt, just read all these pop-outs to see what's going on. I click there and there, and I get the comparison M1 minus M2, so the neutral mean minus the violent mean, the neutral mean minus the violent mean, and there it is, that difference on a difference axis with, of course, the confidence interval on the difference. And so we have there all we need to see and understand and also the basis for interpretation of this comparison. Why did we choose this comparison? Because it matched our research question and we'd specified this comparison in advance of running the study. Hopefully we'd pre-registered it. If you'd like values, look up here and again read the pop-outs to see what's going on. 5.76, the mean of neutral, that looks about right. 4.36 for violent, looks about right. The difference 1.4, yes there it is, 1.4. And the confidence interval from about 0.6 to 2.2, there it is, 0.6 up to, well, estimating a bit, 2.2. And now you can think about what these scores mean. Brand recognition out of 12, where 3 is guessing, and we've got a difference of about 1.5 
on this scale for the neutral compared with the violent content. If you know this task and uh, you think about the context, then you should be able to interpret what that means. A moderately short confidence interval in the uh, overall scale of independent groups where usually we don't have great sensitivity, we expect long confidence intervals, and in fact this one is a little longer as we expect, as it has to be, than the confidence interval on either individual group mean. But we've got large sample sizes there, groups of 84, and so that keeps this down. How do we calculate this? We need to make the assumption of homogeneity of variance that in the underlying populations, the standard deviation or the variance in all these three populations is the same. And then we pool the within group variability over the three. So we get a nice stable estimate of population standard deviation within group and therefore a large number of degrees of freedom. And we use this same pooled standard deviation in all the calculations for MOE for the confidence intervals, whatever comparison we choose to look at. And we use our standard statistical model of random sampling from underlying normal distributions with independent groups. The second comparison I was interested in was neutral versus sexual, and there it is. So once again, I've got the two group means, the difference and the confidence interval on the difference, and all the values up there. And so I can interpret what two or a little over two, somewhere between one and a half and three means in the context of this experiment and the research goals. I think this is uh, meant to illustrate Bushman's conclusion that uh, if you're watching neutral programs, well, maybe you remember something about them or even something about the ads. Whereas if you were watching a violent program, perhaps not so much. The uh, hope, of course, is that if this uh, finding can be replicated, then perhaps advertisers who are interested, of course, in people noticing and remembering their ads so that they can go and buy the products, well, perhaps advertisers might be slightly less encouraging of programs with sexual and violent content on TV. So maybe that might make life a little less interesting, but maybe it would make life a little safer, particularly for children. The next example experiment illustrates using full data. So I can scroll right here. We've just got one set, which is from Anita Rattan, who's one of the members of the Carol Dweck research group. Transfer this data left. There we go. And now this has been switched over to full data below. And there are the values for the three independent groups and the summary statistics were calculated, and here are the means for these groups. Now in this study, they're interested in how students would respond to different sorts of feedback. So in their study, they'd uh, given students feedback that they'd done moderately poorly on a test, and then they gave them feedback. And in every case, they got encouraging feedback. And in the control group, that's all they got. In the comfort group, they got the encouragement, but also they got reassurance. But in the challenge group, they got the encouragement, but then they had some challenge. Their measure was the student's rating of how motivated they felt for the next stage in the course. You might like to compare this with some of the results we discussed back in making the most of this book, that believing you can improve and giving yourself encouraging and challenging feedback can be more effective than just reassuring. So before doing this experiment, they could have set up uh, some comparisons, possibly the uh, control versus challenge perhaps and there's that comparison or possibly the control versus comfort and there's that comparison and just as we did before we could interpret these effect sizes the differences and the confidence interval but i'd like to use this example to illustrate the next thing beyond comparisons and this is contrast so if i go to the independent groups contrast page i don't actually want the uh, uh, this example, we'll come back to that, so I go over to the right, and there's the Rattan motivation data again. I click to transfer that left, and there we go. So once again, on this different page, I've got these three means. But now, instead of simple comparisons, I can do something a little more complex. I can combine means before making a comparison. The term is a contrast. A contrast is some 
linear combination of these means that matches most closely with the research question. So here's a very simple one. Suppose we want to single out the possible effect of the reassurance in comfort and we'd like to compare that with a combination of these other, other two. Remember, we're specifying this in advance. So we can specify a blue subset and um, green subset. We're going to get green minus blue, so we want these two challenging control. Let's click those two. And there we've got the mean of this subset of the groups. And so average of that and that. And there it is, and we can read it off around about five, halfway between those, as we'd expect. Then we want to compare that with another subset, and this subset just has a single group in it. There it is. So we want the green subset mean and the blue subset mean, and we want the difference between them. And there it is on our familiar difference axis. And this confidence interval is a bit shorter than those because we're simply combining these two, a bit like a sort of meta-analysis. We're taking the average of these two, and there it is. And this one just gets copied through. And now we've got the difference between these two independent groups and that independent group. So this confidence interval will be a little longer than either of those. And so we can tease out from these three means an effect size estimated at about 1.5 on this motivation scale. There it is up there, 4.8 minus 3.3, 4.8 minus 3.3 is about 1.5 with this confidence interval on it. And that is our answer, that is our effect size and confidence interval for our best estimate of the effect on motivation of this reassurance. And it looks like this reassurance compared with the other two groups reduces motivation quite notably. And that was one of the main conclusions from this study.